Hello and welcome to episode 99 of my Working With Todoist series. We are only one episode away from episode 100 and if I'm being perfectly honest I have no idea what I'm going to do for that episode just yet so if any of you guys have any ideas about what you'd like me to do for episode 100 that's coming up next week then please leave a comment in the comment section below and help me out a little bit here. Um, so anyway, episode 99, what do I want to do? Well, this week uh, Todoist have released some new additions to their filters options. And so what I would like to do in today's episode is to go through some of these new filters for you and show you what you can do. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest that the way my brain is wired, uh, coming up with the logical um, method of developing filters has never been easy for me personally. I know some of you guys out there, particularly you pro uh, computer programmers, it's a, a language or uh, that's very very simple but for us non-computer programming people the logic behind creating filters and it is very logical i know uh, is sometimes a bit uh, difficult but today i want to show you the updates that we have in todoist this week so that you can see if any of these new filters and i believe some of them really will help you uh, to be able to filter out some of the less important stuff so that you can get on with the important stuff. Okay, and um, before we get into this, I'd just like to remind you guys that for those of you who like to be able to go through tutorials uh, step by step and in a, in a more easier way than just watching videos, my book, Working With Todoist, I think it's up here, Working With Todoist is available on Amazon, iBookstore, and of course you can buy it direct through my website for those of you guys who don't have access to Amazon Kindle Store or the Apple's iBook Store. Okay, let's get straight into it and let's go and show you some of these new filters that we can uh, now use in Todoist. So let's get started. Todoist, the guys over at Todoist have actually done a really, really good job. And uh, last February the 23rd, which was actually Thursday, um, they published a blog post which goes into a lot of detail about these new filters. Now, one of the biggest ones uh, for those of you who use uh, Todoist for assigning tasks to other people or to teammates, then this is a fantastic filter. And basically, you can filter for the people that you have assigned tasks to. So if you are a manager in a company and your teammates uh, and your subordinates and your your team are using um, Todoist, you can then assign, look very quickly, create filters for all your teammates to find out which tasks have been assigned to them and which have been completed. So if I just go into Todoist, I have one here called Collaborators. Now, I only actually work with um, with a, a Jay Miller, the, the productivity and tech guy. And so what I have here is I have the one filter. If I show you down here. Assigned to Jay Miller is all I type. So this is all you type. So it's assigned to double dot, um, <laughs> double dot, the colon, and then the person that you've done. So assigned to, and then in this case, Jay Miller. And it will show me all the tasks that have come up that are... Uh, assigned for J. Now I've uh, hidden the uh, the task because these are J's tasks and I don't know if he's happy showing you the task that he has scheduled. But so that's actually quite an easy one to do. And that's really cool if you're a manager or even if you're using it within your family and you want to see where, which tasks you've assigned to your brother, your sister, your girlfriend, your wife or your husband, whatever. OK, so that's the first one. Now, the second one that uh, and by the way, you can actually there are quite a new filters in here. Seven days and assigned tour. I could put seven days and assigned to to J, which would show all the tasks that are due for J in the next seven days. Uh, tasks that are overdue, I can actually find that overdue and assigned. So you can see from this blog post, which I will put a link to in the notes section below, so you can go through it in your own time. But this is really, really useful for those of you who are assigning tasks. You can also assign for unassigned tasks. Now, if you look at this here, this keyword, the exclamation mark, as you can see in the example here, this 
is not. In to do is speak, the, the exclamation mark means not. So whenever you use that, it means it's going to show you things that do not have that particular assignee or label. Okay, the next one that I want to do is the choose and include or exclude subprojects. Now, this one is particularly useful. Let me show you why. If I go into my projects, and uh, for those of you who don't know, my next book is uh, Your Digital Life version 2.0. And I'm actually looking at doing a book and a workbook for that particular project. So I actually have two subprojects in here. So if I go down to my, if we go back into my filters here, what you'll see is I've got YDL2, which is uh, this one. And at the moment, I have the one, uh, the one, uh, blah, 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 hashtag. Uh, and what one hashtag means, it will search just that one project. So that's the main project. Okay. But if we go into, if I edit this and I now add in a second hashtag, um, what will happen is both um, tasks that I have will actually come up. So it will search the project and all of its sub projects. So within that particular project, I at the moment have just two tasks. So you see, I've got continue working on YDL2 and add in edited changes to Scrivener file. But in my filter, I can actually have that now as uh, one complete list of all the things I have to do. That is super, super easy way of being able to have all your tasks in one th place. So what we have is one hashtag would just give you the project. So that would be in this case, uh, if we go back to the project, it would just be uh, this one. As you can see, it would not show the book. Um, but if I go into, um, if I add the second hashtag, which I've done here, it gives me all of the tasks that are actually within that project and sub projects as well. That is a really, really cool trick. And I'm really quite excited about using that one. Um, so uh, you can also you can also create by new filters are based when the task was uh, created. I haven't actually set up an example of that. But for example, you can use the created before uh, minus three, six, five days, which would search for all the tasks created more than a year ago. Um, not that any of us have ever had that <laughs> problem. So we have a lot of things here, which would be, um, <laughs> uh, I can see a lot of problems within that one. And you can also filter for recurring ta recurring tasks now. Um, so recurring uh, tasks can also be filtered within your uh, Todoist. And again, you just use the query recurring and then uh, the tasks would come up. So i can give you a quick example of that. So let's go into this and I'm going to put um, recurring in the title and then just put recurring. And there you go. What's happened now is all the tasks that are recurring will come up in that one. And you can create filters around that recurring and, you know, like my routine tasks recurring and so on and so forth. But if I went through every single one of them, we'd be here all day and this video would be long. But what I suggest you do is you go into uh, Todoist, go to the Todoist blog. The link is below and just have a play with the filters that you have available. Some really, really cool filters in there. And these are going to save you a lot of time and you can get straight into getting on with your work, which is what is all, it's all about. It's really important. OK, if you have any questions about filters, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to run through that for you or try and help you with the filters. Uh, I've not I, I, I'm not going to suggest I'm an expert on filters because my brain always has problems getting things around that. But I do know how they work and I have had to play with them and I do find them incredibly useful. OK, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have a fantastically productive week and I will see you in the next episode.